Welcome, everyone. I would like to welcome you on our webinar uh, called Mastering Network Troubleshooting. And in this session, we will deep dive into the Flowmon Monitoring Center on two practical scenarios that I will introduce in a minute. My name is Pavel Minařík, and I'm responsible for the Flowmon product management and I will take you through the presentation and live demonstrations that we will showcase today. Before I do that, uh, let me summarize the common downside or common daily experience of people responsible for network operations. In many cases, we face complaints about service availability, about applications, about their performance, about errors, issues. And we need to deal with those somehow. At the beginning, we, as network professionals, we ask ourselves, is this the network? Is it the server? Or is there any issue on the user side with his device or with his configuration? And we spend a lot of time with troubleshooting and root cause analysis. And this is a common pattern that we observe among basically any organization. In a recent report published by EMA organization about network management megatrends, uh, when you go through the findings in this report, you will basically summarize the time spent on troubleshooting issues or generating reports to more than three hours every day that network professionals spend on this time consuming and troublesome tasks instead of working on strategic projects, instead of working on innovation that kind of contributes to the business of the organization so it's a common pattern and i'll show you how you can use flowmon to deal with these daily troubleshooting in an easy and straightforward way so let me introduce you the first scenario this is one of the most common things that you are dealing with it's simply called bandwidth utilization so imagine that there are users sitting in a branch office location and they are complaining about slow applications and slow internet in that specific branch office. And it's not for the first time when this is happening, it's a bit annoying and you would like to resolve it once and for all. From the IT infrastructure monitoring, we can of course see that yes, there is a network utilization, there is some bandwidth on the internet uplink. So you understand, yes, the internet uplink is actually saturated, but you have no idea who is responsible for that, what is being transferred, and you're not able to resolve the issue. You need to deep dive into the network traffic statistics to understand who talked to whom and what was actually the purpose of the network communication. So let me show you how you can proceed with Flowmon. So you'll start with an overview picture where you can understand your network topology and you can understand that the internet uplink is being utilized the line is turning red, so you understand that you have an issue here. From that high level view, you can drill down on the traffic statistics level, you can understand the traffic spike, and you can drill down to the level of, let's say, top talkers in this case, so you understand who are actually the users that are consuming the most significant portion of the bandwidth, what are the public IPs or services that they are consuming, and you can very quickly understand what is the root cause of the issue, 
and you can deal with that root cause of the issue. So what I'm going to show you in this live demo, in the first one, we will do exactly what we have seen on the slides. We will drill down from a traffic statistics to understand who is actually consuming the bandwidth. And we will analyze what application is being used for that network traffic so we can understand if it is legitimate or not. And in addition to that, I'm going to show you how you can actually look at your network utilization trends to understand if you need to adjust your capacity planning. So let me move to the Flowmon Monitoring Center, which is the user interface to understand and analyze network traffic. Here we are in the analysis part and we're looking at traffic chart and I'm very interested in this spike in the data upload during like around 12 p.m. a.m. whatever it is that that doesn't really matter much. So what I can do, I can select the specific time frame that I'm interested in to drill down. And by the right click, I'll get to the context menu where I have predefined the most common queries I can use to understand what's going on. So in this case, I will ask for top 10 statistics by IP conversations. Now I'm running the query on the fly. And I can immediately understand that this internal IP address is actually responsible for like two thirds or maybe almost, yeah, three quarters of uh, all the data. And it's all upload from the internal network to these external IP addresses. So now you would wonder what kind of application is that? So let me show you another analytic uh, capabilities. In this filtering uh, form, you can actually adjust how would you like to query the data, what is the aggregation parameter, and how would you like to sort the data. So let's add to the aggregation, let's add an application tag. So we will understand which application is actually being used. And when I run the query again, I can see that this traffic is actually classified as a BitTorrent networking. So I understand that this device or this user on the device is actually running BitTorrent. And in this case, through the BitTorrent, there is a content being uploaded from our network to the public internet on this amount of traffic. So the traffic is definitely not legitimate and it has a negative impact on the overall user experience in that location. So you can see how simple it is to troubleshoot a scenario like a bandwidth utilization. So let me let me now uh, move to capacity planning part. So when it comes to the internet bandwidth, you would like to understand how you're doing, what is your trend, and if you need to plan some for some more capacity. So let me show you how you can easily do that. So we have a view of all the internet traffic, which is organized by traffic. So basically bits per second, packets per second, flows per second. And you have a view for last one week, one month, or in a one year time frame. And what you can do, you can say, give me historical trends. So Let's compare a whole week time frame with last two, four, and six weeks. And from that comparison, what I can actually see is that if I compare the current week with two weeks ago, I'm actually running 33% less than before. If I compare this week to four weeks ago, I'm running like 40% less. And if I compare to six weeks ago, I'm running slightly less than now. So, so this 
indication tells me that I don't have any significant trend in having, you know, more traffic, less traffic in my network or in my specific uplink. So I don't need to plan any capacity changes. This would be a very different story if all my values are red and showing how I'm consuming more and more bandwidth. And if I want to compare with a more long-term period, I can say compare with 5, 10, 15 weeks, I can see it visualized. And again, I can see the values in the table that are basically telling me pretty much the same that my internet traffic is stable and I don't have to plan for any uh, capacity changes. So that's, uh, that's uh, the first use case. Let me move to the second one. So here we're going to sort out something that looks as an application mystery at the first impression. So let's say that there is a business user that is contacting us because he has an emergency. He's not able to access the company ERP system and he should be doing some work, some reporting, whatever it is. And as usual, he's somewhere on the other side of the country in some branch office where you cannot easily just go there and see. So let's take a look how we can troubleshoot such a situation using Flowmon ground up. So we're basically starting with checking how does the traffic between the client and between the application server look like. So first questions that you ask yourself is, did the client even reach the server to establish the communication? Did the server respond it? Are there any sessions really being established? So first thing that you try to do is to understand if it's a network issue or if it's an application issue. So let me show how we're going to progress that analysis. So let me move on to analysis and let me just move to a specific time frame when the issue was actually happening. So let's say that the user contacted me in this time frame and is telling me that he's not able to connect uh, with uh, the application server. It's not responding whatever error message he's getting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch my analysis to something called a list of flows, which will basically show me all the network sessions. And I need to use a filter. So I will need to use a filter of an IP address of the client, which is this one, and IP address of the server, because I want to show or I want to see specifically traffic between the client and the server. So this way, I'll just run the query to see what is there. And it's actually surprising. I don't see any traffic between the client and between the server at all, which means that the client device did not even contact the server to establish the communication. So here, what you should ask yourself is, what are some protocol dependencies? How is that possible that the client is not even trying to establish the communication with the server? At this point, it's definitely not an application issue. So first thing to check on, it's DNS. In many cases, the main source of the issue is the DNS traffic. So let's see if the client is even able to resolve the domain name of the server. So let's expand the time frame a bit. Let's add another five minutes 
before the, the user reported the issue. And let's just see how the user is able to translate the DNS server name to an IP address. So of course, you need to understand what is the name of the server. And then you can use a specific keyword that will look for how did this particular client actually resolve domain name server22.lan. And that's another benefit of Flowmon that it understands the application layer. So you are not limited to like layer three, layer four information such as IP addresses, ports, protocols. You can also troubleshoot using layer seven information, which is very, very useful. So let's see what we got. And also I need to change the output. I need to change the view to DNS to make sure that I will add into the results of the analysis that I will add specific columns that correspond to dns traffic as you can as you can see here you have a full control about the output and when you analyze dns traffic it's it actually makes sense to add information from the dns protocol into the output so that's what i'm going to do now and i see that this is the client this is the dns server that is being queried for this domain name and the response getting back is non-existing domain which is fairly obvious the client is asking a public dns server instead of using an internal company provided dns server that can translate domain name from the internal segment to ip addresses so you obviously need to fix that issue on the client side and the client will start to use the proper DNS server. And once you do so, you can move on and you can validate that now the client is actually able to get the IP address of the server properly. So let's, let's move on in the timeline and let's run the query again. And here you can see once the problem was actually fixed, you can see that the internal DNS server that should be used is now returning to the client the proper IP address of the server where the client should connect to. So now let's see if the application is already working well for the client or not, as the user is still claiming it's not working properly. So let's move on the timeline again. And let's now go back to the original query. So let's look at the traffic between the client and the server. I'm going back to the default view and let's run the query. So here, what you are actually seeing is fine on the layer two, the client is resolving IP address, MAC address is connecting to that specific server and then it's it's trying to establish the tcp session to the to the application sending sync packet but it's not getting any response back so in this case the traffic is most probably blocked by some firewall or the application or the service is not up and running so when you confirm that the application is really running, no other client has an issue, it still can be a firewall problem. So once you fix the firewall issue, you can run the same query again. So let me again move in the timeline a bit. Once we fix the firewall issue, 
and let's see how the traffic looks like now. And this is a completely different story. These are legitimate TCP sessions that are being established based on the TCP flags. You can see that there are all the flags that you would expect for establishing and then closing the session. And also you see that the amount of transfer data is reasonable and some application traffic exchange can happen in this amount of traffic. So with this, you were, you were able to go through all the issues step by step and just by looking at the network traffic, you were able to troubleshoot and understand what is wrong instead of doing some complicated pickups, instead of having some troubleshooting sessions with the user, you can get the evidence that you need just from the network traffic itself. Let me move to a summary. So with Flowmon, with the network visibility, what you are getting as the key benefits is a complete understanding of what is going on in your environment from the network traffic perspective. You are able to store the traffic statistics, the event evidence, all the data for a long period of time, like weeks or even months of the history. You can go back in time and you can confirm if specific traffic happened in your network. You understand bandwidth utilization, performance utilization, and you can drill down to the individual network sessions for the purpose of a root cause analysis and troubleshooting very, very quickly. When it comes to product architecture as such, uh, you can think about Flowmon as like two layers. First layer is about understanding the network traffic. So that's the layer where you deploy devices called probes that get a full copy of the network traffic and generate network traffic statistics in IP fix format. Or you can leverage existing flow sources like routers, switches, or even cloud platforms that provide so-called flow logs that you can ingest into Flowmon Collector. Then the Flowmon Collector is responsible for normalizing, storing, processing, and visualizing all the network traffic where you can run your analytics and reporting, which is exactly what we did today with the built-in Flowmon Monitoring Center. And in addition to that, there are modules for network security, so Flowmon ADS for detection of security issues, even full packet capture or application performance monitoring but we're going to talk about those later in uh, the following webinars. So that's it. And let me move to questions to see what I should answer. Can you explain Flowmon versus NTA license difference? Okay. So we do have an like NPMD product offering, which stands for Network Performance Monitoring Diagnostics, which is the probe, which is the collector. And the purpose of this offering is to monitor the network traffic, provide reporting, analytics. It's basically everything that you have seen today is included. What is not included is the additional module called Flowmon ADS which is our NDR network detection response offering. That's a module, that's a pure software module that you install on top of the Flowmon collector. And that module is responsible for continuous analysis of all the network traffic statistics and detection of security issues in form of events. So that's the, that's the difference. Then there is another question about what is the what is the difference or what is the definition of download and upload let's just go there that's that's not an issue so we have let me simplify that view so we have uh, an internet profile which is defined based on the network segments in my location so download is defined as 
everything that basically originates in my network subnet in that location and the destination is outside of that network subnet so this is the traffic that is actually routed to the internet and upload is the other way around so the source ip address is in the range of my subnet and the destination is somewhere in the internet so this way it's an easy way how you can distinguish between download and upload and then the traffic chart is visualized in the way that you can see what is the download part and what is the upload part next question is flowmon is stand alone solution or uh do i need whatsapp gold with i don't know so flowmon and whatsapp gold are independent products while these are integrated if you are using both products at the same time so for for flowmon you don't need whatsapp gold and for whatsapp gold you don't need flowmon but when you have these two products in place the data from flowmon can be automatically integrated into dashboards and reports available in WhatsApp Gold. So you can have a combined perspective of IT infrastructure monitoring, like you know, CPU utilization, memory utilization of individual servers. And at the same time, on the same screen, you can actually see network utilization of those same devices from Flowmon perspective. We're definitely going to showcase this on one of the future webinars. There is another question. If I use interface index for specific input output interface better than subnets, if I have, yeah, that goes back to the definition of the internet traffic download upload. Of course, you have always multiple options how to achieve that interface indexes are definitely one of the options, how you can distinguish between what is your ingress and egress traffic from the location. Good point. Okay, are there any further questions? Can you please explain about how sizing the Flowmon license? So for, for sizing Flowmon, you need to understand your high level network topology. So you need to understand where you will get the network telemetry if these are some core switches or some branch office routers or where you are going to deploy the probes if you are deploying probes you need to understand how much traffic you need to analyze so there is a different type of probes for one gigabit 10 gigabit or even 100 gigabit network interfaces so all is based on your network topology and volume of traffic that you are going to measure on the collector side it's really about the retention period you want to achieve because collector comes with uh, a disk capacity the primary licensing parameter for the collector is the available disk capacity that determines how long you will be able to store uh, the data without any aggregation, without losing any detail. So these are the main, main parameters to understand the license. But of course, uh, we can uh, take this question offline and uh, connect uh, with you for more details or more detailed explanation. Okay, I don't see yeah, one more question. I need help with NetFlow in Azure. Who can I contact? Uh, for any assistance with the product as such, please contact the technical support. Uh, there is a support portal. Uh, 
uh, currently running at uh, hostname support.camptechnologies.com and then you will take it from there. There is a way how to submit a support ticket and the support team will get back to you and help you to configure how to get flow logs from the Microsoft Azure environment. I don't see any more questions. So thank you very much for joining the webinar. I hope that the information presented today are useful for you. And I'm looking forward to see you at one of our next webinars that are already planned. And I believe that the next topic is NDR, Network Detection Response. Thank you. Goodbye.